The issue we will be debating is which has a better defense mechanism, the giant leaf insect or the brown st stink bug. With both species of insects having years and years to develop the most effective defense mechanisms, you have to look very closely at the different factors that could determine how effective they really are. Some of those factors include how the climate has, climate may hinder the defenses that each insect may utilize. We also have to take into account the number of predators that may inhabit the same areas as the insect. Finally, we will take a look at the defense mechanisms themselves to see how they function and are utilized by the insect. Hi, my name is Caroline, and I'm going to be debating the side of the phylum gigantum, also known as the giant leaf bug. And my name is Dylan, and I'm debating on the side of the Haleomorpha halis, also known as the brown stink bug. It's no secret that the phylum gigantum, or better known as the giant leaf bug, resemble giant leaves. These insects are unique because of how closely they resemble them. Some say they look more like a leaf than an actual insect. They have flat, wide bodies that are shaped similarly to leaves. Females of the species can grow up to 12 centimeters in length, while males, who have rarely been seen in the wild, grow up to only 9 centimeters. However, males have longer antennae than females do. Phylum gigantum do have wings, but only the males have the ability to fly. This does not come as a problem, though, since flight is not necessary for their survival or part of their defense mechanism. The front wings are short and hardened. The back wings are membranous and larger. Their wings being membranous further resembles a leaf by mimicking the leaf's veins. A giant leaf bug can hold their legs almost flat against, flat against their bodies, mimicking the flatness of a leaf. These insects can also reproduce sexually or asexually. Eggs generally take about four to six months to hatch. The larvae or ninads are brown and more active than the adults. After their first molt, which happens once a month, they start to receive their green color, and after seven months, they have reached sexual maturity as well as their adult size. Their lifespan is about seven to nine months. Giant leaf bugs' defense is in their mimicry of leaves. Because of this, they stay still during the day and only move around to find food at night. These insects rarely move because doing so could prove fatal. Giant leaf bugs do not have a huge impact on society, but if found in large numbers, could be harmful to trees. One thing to note though, is that many people like to keep them as pets. In this way, their impact on society is a positive one. By being pets, they bring happiness to people's lives. The insect that I have chosen to debate on is the Haleomorpha halis, or more commonly known as the brown stink bug. As many people know, the main source of defense for a stink bug is its foul smelling chemical that is produced on its glands located on their abdomen. With small parasitic wasps being one of the main active predators for the stink bug, you can see that even the wasps aren't as dangerous to an adult stink bug as they are to only the eggs. The bad smell that is produced not only smells, but also tastes extremely bitter. This can cause things like fish, lizards, and some birds to spit out the bug just as fast as it was eaten. Unlike many species of insects, the process of reproduction for the stink bug involves the genetic makeup of two different adult insects. This allows the offspring to have the ability to adapt to the environment that they face. This also allows for the evolution of their defense mechanisms over time if introduced to new environments or new predators. For example, the foul smell to get rid of predators or even coloration to better blend in with the surroundings. The smell that the stink bug gives off isn't only used to protect, it also used to, to attract other stink bugs. They do this not only to find a partner, they also to tell the other stink bugs that there is a good place to bed down for winter. Stink bugs spend the winter in an inactive state called diapause. The difference between diapause and hibernation is that diapause doesn't, let the doesn't last the entire winter. Although diapause isn't a direct defense mechanism, stink bugs become extremely hard to find because they are all burrowed away in a safe place to sleep. While in this state, the stink bug is able to almost completely stop its metabolism and drop its body temperature, all out allowing it to survive for long periods of time without eating. I will admit the smell produced by the stink bug is quite strong. 
and would cause most predators to walk in the other direction. However, this is not always the case. Predators do still attempt to eat the bug. Yes, they do taste bitter, and the predator might even spit them out. But who is to say the damage caused by the predator's bite isn't fatal? Even if the predator spits the bug out immediately, there is a high chance the stink bug has been injured beyond repair during this traumatic process. One should also take into consideration that stink bug eggs are not heavily protected from predators, which leaves them defenseless. This loophole could cause significant decreases within the stink bug population. The giant leaf bug hardly even comes into contact with their predators. Not only are they out of sight, but the giant leaf bug almost never has to go to search for food. The insects generally live on plants that are their food source. Therefore, they don't have to look that far for food and stay hidden the entire time. On top of that, these insects aren't just green. They have brown spots that perfectly resemble leaf decay so that they don't stand out among the leaves. Although it is true that stink bugs might encounter predators more often, having a physical defense mechanism allows them to have a fighting chance to get away and heal up if they are attacked. Stink bugs are also ha have the ability to grow limbs back if they are lost to a predator. Also, stink bugs' eggs might sit underground, but they also only have one real predator that they have to worry about, and that would be the parasitic wasps if they even find them in dens. The leaf bug does have extremely good camouflage, but that doesn't help much when a predator has his sights locked in on it. Stink bugs have the ability to physically keep predators away from them and avoid being attacked by using their smell, while the leaf bug has to hope that they don't get found because they don't have a, any physical deter deterrent for the predators. Leaf bugs also have no way of keeping predators from eating them if they are found. This is where the stink bug shows its dominance and in the ability to make themselves taste bad and stop any attack. It is true that if a predator spots the giant leaf bug, there is little they can do to protect themselves. However, there is a simple fix to this. The leaf bug can run to a new hiding spot, confusing the predator, leaving them unable to relocate where the bug escaped. In addition to this, the giant leaf bugs are very inactive during the day and mostly only move around at night. This makes it nearly impossible to be spotted. You might argue that the predator would be able to spot movement within the leaves. However, giant leaf bugs have the ability to walk in a rocking back and forth manner, imitating a leaf blowing in the wind, further masking their presence. The stink bug might have the ability to regrow its limbs, but they don't have the ability to regrow internal structures that are vital to life. On top of that, the smell and bitter taste they give off doesn't ensure that the predator won't eat them. If the predator is hungry enough, they'll eat anything. Additionally, regrowing limbs requires a lot of time and energy. What if the stink bug is attacked while they're in the process of regrowing a limb? Will their defenses be as strong? Will their body be able to survive a second attack and need to regrow multiple limbs? If a stink bug was to have internal organ damage, it is correct that there is little chance for them to survive. That's why they have a hard exoskeleton to keep their internal organs safe if they are attacked. Although the stink bug can't bite, its exoskeleton does have sharp edges as a, little as a last line of defense. This can cause the attacker to spit them out if one of the sharp edges manages to cut them. Even if the exoskeleton is broken, some studies found that the damage that is taken by the exoskeleton often doesn't correspond with internal injuries. On the topic of growing back limbs, it is true that it takes lots of energy for them to create, to create for any creature to be able to grow a limb back. But it is very unlikely that a stink bug would be in any kind of danger while they are growing their limbs back. This is because after the stink bug gets away from its attacker, it will hide away in a safe place until the healing process is complete. Giant leaf bugs have some of the most convincing and complex camouflage techniques. These insects resemble leaves so much that they have been known to mistake their own kind for an actual leaf, resulting in accidental cannibalism. From having the appearance of a leaf to resembling a leaf blowing in the wind while walking, the giant leaf bug can easily fool predators. This gives them the greatest defense, invisibility. Not only do giant leaf bugs have a remarkable defense mechanisms, but they are also important to research. Frank Hinman, German entomologist, in a paper he wrote, noted that the phylum gigantum looked much different in the wild than the ones he was breeding in captivity. The 
The ones in the wild greatly vary and resemble the leaves in their surroundings, but the ones in captivity seem to be consistent and are mostly just like green. An article published in the Halls Lithner again notes that they are a morphological variable species when it comes to the look and shape of their abdomens, and there is no consistency allowing morphological separation between populations. This suggests that further research can be done to see if there are genetic differences within populations. If this is the case, then it might be proven that there is a flaw in the process of classifying insects. The stink bug has used this ability to defend itself with the stench they give off for hundreds of years and have been able to continue to survive and multiply with no problems at all. Between the smell, camouflage, and the ability to grow back limbs, makes the brown stink bug one of the most versatile survivors in the insect world. The smell they give off also is multi-purpose between defense and communication with others of its kind. Because the stink bug passes down two sets of D adult DNA, this also makes it possible for the stink bug to have the ability to adapt, change, and evolve over time to be able to accommodate themselves to the environment that they are in. The stink bugs also have some scientific research potentials that have already been looked into. One example of this is the research done at Virginia Tech on the chemical language that the stink bug uses. With that knowledge, it would allow the humans to be able to make an artificial chemical to allow farmers to be able to keep the stink bugs off the crops without having to use pesticides. The stink bugs, the stink bug is important to study because with more knowledge about how the chemicals they release are used, for communication, we could someday have the ability to prevent the infestation of stink bugs in homes before they even start. So because by using pheromones to keep the stink bugs out of human dwellings.